This is December 16, 2010. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott. We are privileged to have with us today Florence Wheaton Finnamore Harper. Welcome, Florence. Thank you. Uh, may I ask when you were born? 91522. And where were you born? New Bedford, Massachusetts. And what is your current address? Ashland. Your marital status? I'm widowed. All right. And you were married twice? Twice. Okay. Do you have children? Yes. How many? Three. And I understand you also are a grandmother and a great-grandmother. Correct. Okay. And how many times a grandmother? Four. And how many times a great-grandmother? Five. All right. Where and when did you enter the military? Uh, I went out of Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, the 28th of December, 1944. Okay. And why did you join at the time? Well, I knew that there was no chance of my going to college. My mom was a single parent. Uh, and I thought it would be a good experience, with a bit of patriotism. Um, so that's about, that's about it. What branch did you join? U.S. Naval Reserve. And why did you choose that branch? Um, after much investigating, in, in investigation, I decided that uh, that fit my profile better than any other. And before the interview, you were mentioning a girlfriend joining the Marines? Uh, I had a friend who joined the Marines. Actually, there were three of us mm -hmm. that were going to go in. It was my idea. And one got a diamond. The other one, folks wouldn't sign. And so I went by myself. Mm -hmm. Did your uh, did family and friends join the service when you did, aside from that incident you just discussed? No. OK. Where were you sent for basic training? Hunter College, New York. And for how long was the basic? Five weeks. Tell us what it was like. It was beastly cold. Mm -hmm. Beastly cold. Um, conversion from civilian to military uh, takes in, changes your whole lifestyle. And uh, there's a lot of discipline mm -hmm. involved that most of us don't adhere to. You mentioned the word intimidating. Can you uh, describe what the, the, the basic was like? Uh, well, if we were um, in regimental review and someone dropped beside you, you didn't, you just continued on. You didn't look. That was it. Aside from that, was there anything else you disliked about uh, basic training? Yes, <laughs> they, they um, had some films that they, scare tactics, uh, if you're not on time, you're AWOL, um, then um, health issues. Those were two, two very intimidating things. Mm -hmm. uh, what, um, what was it about health issues? Well, uh, all the disease that is out there. Mm -hmm. okay, um, what kind of disease? Are we talking uh, the mumps? The sexual. sexual. Oh, those kinds of diseases. Yes. Okay. Uh, what did you like about BASIC? The camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned before the interview that everyone was a college graduate but you. Just, was, just about. Just about. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? It was great. Mm -hmm. we, be, we made some longtime friends, mm -hmm. and even after we were out. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that you had a commercial background in business training. Did you get that training in the Navy or before? That was in high school. It was in high school. And mm -hmm. where did you go to high school? Foxborough High School. Mm -hmm. Graduated cum laude, I mean, uh, with honors. Mm -hmm. It was uh, pro merito then. Uh, now it's national honor. Very good. 
and did you were you in um, in the workforce before you entered the Navy? Yes, I worked for a Foxboro company that made uh, um, thermos, uh, all kinds of instruments, and uh, I had had was responsible for some of the priority items because the war was. Uh, now, how was it determined what kind of advanced training you would receive? Was it based on your uh, working before the war? Well, I think it was my, my high school background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you became a Liberty Yeoman. Right. Now, what's the difference between a Liberty Yeoman and a regular Yeoman? A regular Yeoman might be a stenographer mm -hmm. uh, or, well, that's or anyone that worked in the office. Uh, I was in charge of Liberty Cards. And what were Liberty Cards? No one went ashore without a Liberty Card. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to distribute those. You were pretty much the gatekeeper then? Pretty much. All right. You mentioned uh, you were in Iowa State College for three months. What was that all about? That was for my yeoman training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, where was your first duty station after BASIC? Duty station? By f the I believe you were in Florida? Richmond. Richmond. Now where is Richmond, Florida? It's uh, um, before you get to the Keys, between Coral Gables and the Keys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And were you sent there as an individual or part of a unit? Individual. And where was, uh, where, where were you reporting to in Richmond, Florida? What kind of base? Uh, it was a uh, lighter than air base. And they had dirigibles, mm -hmm. and the dirigibles monitored uh, the coastline and also, but also on the lookout for submarines. Mm -hmm. And what did you do? What were your duties when you were down in Florida? My duties? Mm -hmm. uh, like, were you a stenographer? Did you do paperwork? No, liberty I, cards? I, I was just Liberty. You I were was, just Liberty I just cards. Liberty Yeoman. Mm -hmm. All right. And what was your rank at the time? Yeoman third class. And still in the uh, United States Naval Reserve. Right. Mm -hmm. Were your clothes adequate for the climate you were in? Mm, pretty much. Okay. And what kind of clothes were you wearing down there? Uh, actually, I, I bought a couple of tailor-mades. One was a white shark skin, one was a lightweight blue. The one that uh, was given to us was a, a, a lovely wool suit. And very, uh, the shoes were clunky. <laughs> uh, of course, being in Florida, uh, how did you deal with the heat and humidity? We didn't have air conditioning in those days. Mm -hmm. We opened the windows. Uh, if you didn't wear your shoes, they might get some mold. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was uh, that part of Florida like, the time you were stationed down there? That area was jungle. I mean, it was really undeveloped. Mm -hmm. Not like today? No. Okay. Did you feel your officers gave you good leadership? Yes. And uh, when, um, whenever you took a break, had some R and R, did you kind of stick around in Florida? Did you travel? No, I went to Louisiana because I had been dating a uh, Marine officer, mm -hmm. and I visited his family on my way home to Massachusetts. And what was New Orleans uh, or Louisiana like at that time? Wonderful people, but mm -hmm. they were they were hill people. Mm -hmm. They were hill people. Okay, where and when were you discharged? Uh, I was discharged right there in Richmond on the uh, February nineteen forty six. Was it? And how long were you stationed in Florida? A little over a year. 
At what rank and with what decorations when, uh, when you were discharged? Uh, I was a yeoman third class. Mm -hmm. uh, had I signed over, I would have been second class, but I chose not to do that. And uh, I, the only medal I can remember was the Good Conduct Medal. What were your feelings about coming home? Uh, well, I was married, so we were starting a whole new life together, Philip and I. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's uh, let's introduce Philip now. Okay. Uh, this was Philip Fenimore. Philip Fenimore. And when did you marry Philip? January of forty-six. And was Philip a veteran as well? Yes, he was. And what branch of the service was he in? Navy. And I understand he was a cook in the Navy. That's correct. And describe the circumstances as to how he became a cook in the Navy. He was on uh, transport mm -hmm. ships, and uh, I think he was hungry. So he volunteered. <laughs> yeah. So when you, uh, you moved back here to Massachusetts, by the way, did Philip have any uh, Massachusetts connections? No, his, his parents. His mother was here. Yeah. Mother, okay. Yeah. And sister and brother. And where were they living at the time? Framingham. So you came up to Framingham to settle? Right. All right. Yeah. Uh, when you came home, did you discuss with your spouse or family and friends what you had done in the service? Well, I, I imagine I had. I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you join any veterans' organizations after the war? I belong to the American Legion. You still belong to the American Legion? Yes, I do. Uh, which, uh, which office or branch? Uh, Ashland. Ashland. Mm -hmm. Have you received any veterans' benefits, uh, hospitalization, GI Bill? No. And that's neither you nor your husband? R right. Okay. And you ever attended any reunions with your old outfits? Not with my my own outfit, but we have we did get together uh, with the brigadier general a couple of years ago, uh, and it was all the services. Mm -hmm. How important to you was serving in the military? Uh, I felt I'd done my little piece, mm -hmm. um, and it was, I think I grew a lot. Did you feel in some way it affected your life? Uh, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What was the most memorable experience in your military career? On my birthday. Mm -hmm. September 15th, 1945, we had a hurricane. For 48 hours, because they knew it was coming, they flew in planes from all over Florida for safekeeping mm -hmm. because we had three of the largest hangars in the world. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we had a fire and everything they brought in was burned. We lost one civilian fireman. And, and of course, we were confined to the barracks because there was lots of smoke and mm -hmm. not, not nice. No. Was there a memorable character during that period? Uh, not really. Mm -hmm. Any humorous experiences? Yeah. <laughs> Philip, being a cook, would call and say, would you like some coffee? I said, oh, the office would love coffee. He would send over a cup of coffee, five pounds of sugar. <laughs> and sugar being kind of rare at that time? Right. And I didn't even put sugar in my coffee. But I was embarrassed because I didn't. I, here I told the office we were going to have coffee, and I get one cup of coffee. <laughs> and five pounds of sugar. <laughs> All right, let's uh, bring you up to uh, back up to Framingham after the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did you work or your husband work? I worked, uh, well, he worked for the com uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. the highway department. I worked at Grace Congregational Church mm -hmm. as a secretary. 
And that's Grace Congregation on the Framingham? Right. And how long were you there? Um, two years. Mm -hmm. Now, you told me before uh, we started that your, your husband died rather early, at the age of 47, from colon cancer. Right. And that was in 1966? Correct. Three years later, you married husband number two. I'm, that mm -hmm. was Norman Harper. Norman Harper, correct. And I understand he was a native resident. He was. And where did he live? On Oak Street. How did you two meet? He was my insurance man. And his wife had died, mm -hmm. and uh, she was music supervisor in the, Framingham, in the Ashland Framingham school system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By that time, you were um, you had settled in Ashland back in, I believe, it was fifty seven. Fifty seven. And what was Ashland like at that time? Small town, small mm -hmm. town, between six and seven thousand people. Mm -hmm. Now I think we have um, the latest is sixteen, and that's a little iffy because the uh, the, the town clerk says sixteen, but other reports say sixteen eight. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Harper still worked in insurance? He did. Okay. In the meantime, were you working? Framingham State College. Okay. And what were you doing at Framingham State College? I uh, was manager in the registrar's office. Mm -hmm. 29 years. 29 years. So 29 years. Um, when did you, did you retire? I, yes, I did in 88. Mr. Harper died in 87. Mm -hmm. Um, I took the summer off in 66 uh, to take care of Philip because he wanted to die at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By this time again, you have three children. Uh, did any of your children or grandchildren consider joining the military? No. And they still haven't? They still haven't. All right. Is there anything we haven't asked of you or any additional comments you would like to make? No, I think not. Okay. And I just wanted to have, show you the, the, the yeoman card. Now you carry with, uh, that with you all the time. Yes, because it uh, affords me some privileges. I get a 10% discount mm -hmm. in purchases. Mm -hmm. Now before uh, we wrap things up, Talk about the commercial you made 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, well, that was Life of Boston. Mm -hmm. And my friend said, uh, I'd like you to do it. I said, I'm not an actress. And he said, I don't want an actress. I want you. Um, he and his partner moved into the house at like 10 o'clock in the morning. We did a one minute commercial, two segments, 30 seconds each. Mm -hmm. Today you get like six, eight commercials in a minute. Um, his partner said, uh, here's your script. And I said, ooh, that wasn't in the deal. But we took segments, memorized segments, and then did that. Um, so uh, the first part was in my kitchen. The other one was supposed to be two weeks later in my living room, then I had to do them change of clothing. And as I said, the, um, his partner said, as he's leaving, is $250 enough? And I said, I would have done it for nothing, because it was such fun, because <laughs> I'm such a ham. Oh. Virgo, Virgo is a show-off, so you know that, don't you? <laughs> and apparently you, uh, you got an unexpected benefit uh, yes, in the I airport. Did. Tell us about that. Well, um, several years later, I'm flying to Florida checked in at the terminal, but not at the gate. The young man behind the desk strolls over and he looks at me and said, excuse me, but haven't I seen you on TV? Well, I said, yes. Uh, he said, you're so credible. I said, well, thank you. And I'm thinking to myself, honey, get a life. You've got nothing better to do than watch me on that TV. But it was on every station at noon, mm -hmm. so I stopped. But I was... Uh, 
I enjoyed the responses that I got from people. They'd call on the phone and say, my, my uh, niece was in Huma, Louisiana, and she said, oh, I'm writing a letter home, and all of a sudden I hear a familiar voice, and I look up, and there you are on national TV. And I said, no, it wasn't national. It was just on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. But that, uh, that was quite a while. Mm -hmm. And people, I meet people in the store, and they say, ooh, why do I recognize you? Or I'd get a telephone call from someone else that said, oh, do we have another Jane Pauley on our hands? <laughs> so it was fun. But this fellow at the airport, that, that was very strange because I thought I must have reminded him, his mother, his grandmother, or someone mm -hmm. in his family because 10 years later I'm traveling to Florida and he says to me, aren't you the no-nonsense lady? And I said, yes, I am. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. Let's get back to your involvement in the American Legion. Uh, are, were you uh, auxiliary or regular American Legion? Just regular. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you hold any offices? No. No, no offices? No. What do you think about uh, today's military? Especially the women serving in the military. Women serving. I'm surprised that they're on the front lines. Really, uh, they've come a long way, mm -hmm. and uh, my heart aches for some who leave children behind. I just, I just can't imagine myself doing that. Mm -hmm. and Is there anything else? I think not. Okay. Well, thank you, Florence, Vina, Finnamore, Harper, for your participation in this program. Thank you. Thank you.